Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage has no idea who I am, but I was obsessed with his videos when I first started. I really liked his approach. I really liked a lot of what he had to share. He was very educational without being condescending. He was not afraid to make mistakes. I just liked watching him. Hi, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile with another haul video. Uh, this, I believe, is number three in a revised series of how I'm doing them. Uh, so if you've been watching some of the old ones and now starting to watch some of these new styles, I would appreciate any comments you have on whether you like these shorter themed versions better than the random, hey, this is what I got this week. Uh, but regardless, uh, this is going to be a themed one covering pottery and porcelain that I picked up. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know that I am very much a fan of uh, pottery and porcelain and glass for that matter. I've already done a glass video uh, that should already have been posted and this one is going to focus on some of my acquisitions uh, in pottery and porcelain. Uh, looking at a couple pieces that I had picked up, these were a little uh, some earlier pieces that just ended up getting stuck in a box uh, waiting to get posted onto Etsy, so these will be going up soon. Uh, I'm a big fan of Noritake. Uh, they have been in business for, uh, I believe, since 19th century. I think they started in the 1800s. And so there is a lot of patterns to follow. Uh, this is a simple one uh, that I picked up, a simple bowl. I guess that was upside down. Uh, it's got a vern, uh, an urn of flowers. It's uh, got these handles on it. It is a lugged handled cereal bowl. Uh, that's the term that I've discovered for a couple of things of porcelain when it's got these uh, extended lips on them. Replacements is always a nice go-to. Replacements.com is a nice go-to just as a frame of reference, and they do have these bowls in stock, which is not always the case for a lot of what I find, and they are selling them for $12. I uh, mentioned in previous videos, uh, listening to Jeffrey of Real Nifty Vintage, that replacements is, although a nice frame of reference, is completely unrealistic to go for price points, uh, that a target goal is typically going to be around half of that, and then to look at comps. And what I found interesting on this one is, although there were 80 sales listed on WorthPoint in 2019, not a single sale of a lugged cereal bowl. There might have been some big sets where this was mixed in there, but I didn't see those, but certainly no individual listings for the bowls by themselves. And there are eight listings on Etsy, which is where I sell, so that is where I focus uh, looking at the competition. There are eight listings for Windsor, a uh, Noritake Windsor pattern on Etsy right now. Again, none for the bowl. The fact that replacements has them for 12 bucks and they're in stock, you know, this isn't certainly isn't a case where things are sur sur super scarce and I can get high price, but I might be able to sell it for, you know, in that $10 range, maybe a little bit closer to what replacements typically sells at, simply because there don't see seem to be a lot of them out there, and this would be being purchased probably as a replacement piece. Uh, staying in the Asian pottery realm, I have two pieces of Nippon that I've picked up. I've not had much uh, success with Nippon yet. I have not listed any. Uh, I might have listed maybe one on Etsy. I have not sold anything on Etsy yet. I'm having a hard time figuring out exactly how to... I know I, to date it, Nippon because it's actually saying Japan in, uh, or it's not saying not saying Japan, that became a requirement to state the country of origin in English, I believe it was in 1914 or 1924. Uh, so that if the fact that it says Nippon means that these pieces are early, there is a footed, probably sauce bowl, uh, maybe a sherbet bowl, um, with a really attractive uh, pink floral pattern and a gold trim on that. This one is marked hand-painted Nippon with a rising sun uh, symbol. That's where I'm starting to struggle is I do not know how to find these individual uh, companies. So I don't know if it necessarily matters. Uh, the fact that it's Nippon is enough to date it. And since it's, it's not a major name, people would be purchasing it simply because it's Nippon. Uh, this piece, this plate, does not match it, but I'm thinking I'm gonna list them together because they are complementary. They both have pink florals on it. This one's a little bit different. It's manufactured by somebody different. 
this is hand painted S K and then it says made in Nippon. So that one has a slightly different uh, manufacturer. The this plate unfortunately has a little bit of a chip which I did not know at the time that I got it. Um, it also the gold is uh, fairly worn so this is not going to bring a lot of money so I figure if I pair it together it, it looks like a nice underplate to the sauce bowl. I don't have one of the, the spoon, soft spoons for it. Maybe I can look for the one of those. But I might be able to post that. I think I got this in a, in a mixed lot. Uh, probably have about a buck's worth in it. So maybe I can turn that around into eight to ten bucks plus shipping and kind of get my feet wet on selling Nippon. Uh, another piece that I have had... Um, Little kind of for a while. This was also picked up uh, at an auction uh, in a mixed lot. This is a Hull um, Hull Pottery USA, and it is a double vase. Doing some research on this one, the uh, Hull vases. There's quite a few of them that have listed and sold on Etsy in a variety of color schemes. This is one of the popular ones. And I had my notes on it, and unfortunately I can't figure out what I did with them. Um, these do not sell for a lot of money, but there have been several sales in 2019 that did sell around $15 to $25. I have a dollar into this, uh, just kind of doing a cost averaging like uh, Crazy Lamp Lady uh, does, or uh, Drew talks about in Crazy Lamp Lady. Effectively, I've got about a buck into it. If I can turn this around for around 15 bucks plus shipping, I'd be pretty happy. It's a very distinct color scheme that I'm not sure is going to be to everyone's taste. It's a very pale yellow, almost chartreuse, pale green color at the top. And then you've got the green uh, floral with a big pink bow and then the pink bottom. It's called the Woodland Pattern, uh, but there are a lot of comps on it and not a lot currently for sale. Uh, there were a handful, this is going from memory because I can't figure out what I do with my little notebook. Um, on this one, but I believe there were three or four listed and if I remember correctly They were all selling listing for around 30 plus Which based on the comps is, is too high. So I don't need that much So hopefully I can go in there be one of the three or four that's listed and uh, be on the low end and hopefully get it uh, attract a little bit of attention the uh, I went to a thrift store that I had never been to before uh, this one was in Wisconsin and it was, I believe it was Orient uh, Lutheran affiliation, but there was no signage. There was nothing that really talked about that. They did have a section of religious items, uh, but I heard somebody in conversation. It made it sound like they might have been connected somehow to the Lutheran church. Regardless, it was a, a very uh, nice traditional uh, um, thrift store. Prices were, uh, let's just say, inconsistent. I uh, looked at jewelry for the first time, I really don't do a lot with jewelry, and decided I really couldn't, I didn't know what to do because in some cases things were 10 cents, in other cases they were $25, and there didn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to what was what. So I don't know enough about that yet to you know really focus on there. So I went back to my typical decorative objects and came across one of my favorites, a piece of leftin. So this is a leftin uh, reticulated plate on a pedestal. It has the Lefton label on it, and that label is uh, dating it from 1953 to 1971. It's the Lefton's Registered U.S. Patent Office Exclusives Japan. Uh, they were very consistent in their labeling, and there's been quite a bit of research that's been done on that, uh, so it's fairly easy to tell. Um, this is not the oldest foil label that they used, but it's one of the earlier ones pre-1971, so it's a nice piece to have. There were, uh, it's considered the chintz pattern, pink chintz. There's also a violet chintz. The, there were two of them that sold in 2019, sold for 15 bucks. I paid $2.50 for it. Um, the ones that are listed in Etsy, there are 30 different versions of plates on stand or pedestaled plates. They are all selling in around the $20 range, but none of them are chintz and none of them are this pattern. I'm not saying that this pattern is necessarily the most attractive pattern, but it is at least a little bit more unique. I'm not competing with other existing exact uh, duplicates of that pattern. So I'd probably somewhere in that $20 plus shipping range, uh, hopefully get a little bit of attention to it. Uh, this was a nice piece that I got excited by. 
it's I like pottery. Um, this is kind of a bluish, grayish uh, with a brown uh, coloring on it. It was a, I paid $3 for it. It has an impressed mark that I'm hoping you might be able to see, but it says, the circular mark says coal pottery, and then it's uh, Cox Mill Road in Sanford, North Carolina. And then there is an incised signature, which after doing a little bit of back and forth and research, it's GF Cole. Uh, and that stands for General Foister, F-O-I-S-T-E-R, Cole, one of the family and one of the artists that was working on pottery. He passed away in 1991, so by definition, this ends up uh, being pre-1991. There were a handful of pitchers, uh, these small, I don't know if you'd necessarily consider it a creamer, it might just be a decorative pitcher, uh, this diminutive size. There were several that were a little bit narrower where the spout came, or I'm sorry, the handle came up and came down. That appeared to be a special collection called the Skyline series. Obviously that is not what this one is. There were four of this style of pitcher that sold in 2019, ranging from $15 to $25. Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. Some of them specified who signed it, some of them did not. Uh, the General Foister or G.F. Cole pieces didn't necessarily go for a lot more money, although he did do some really artsy ones, like he did some of the face jugs and things like this. This one, even by G.F. Cole, those didn't seem to be as prevalent. Is They're still going to be in that $20 to $25 range. This is very lightweight, definitely under a pound, so I'd be able to, even if I add shipping into it, you know, if I could sell this for $20, $25, maybe $30 bucks total, including shipping, I've got three bucks into it. It's a really nice looking piece of pottery and North Carolina pottery I think uh, will be attractive. A, another piece of pottery that I picked up, this is a Pacific stoneware dated 1972. It's the baluster form and this is, uh, from what I can tell, a little bit less of an individual. It is signed uh, B. Welsh, which stands for Bennett Welsh. These seem to be a little bit more of a production line. This exact design uh, appears multiple times in Etsy and in, uh, I'm sorry, in uh, Worth Point is having sold on eBay. There is a similar design you know, with the same blue stripes, with the same white flower, but with a slightly different shape. Uh, it's a little bit more bulbous at the top. It doesn't have this narrow and then wide. Most of the pieces that we're selling were, were going in the $30 to $35 range. Um, not a huge, a, lot of, a huge amount of money. Uh, one of them sold for $15. I have $4 into that one. Uh, when I did a couple searches while I was at the store, I got a couple uh, that I, for some reason I thought they were selling for a lot more. I thought I was coming across $40 and $50 range pricing, so I don't know if I was looking at the wrong thing. I still will get my money back out of it. It is an attractive piece. It's not, again, there's only one, there's only one listing on Etsy right now, and that's for the slightly separate, different form. That one is listed for 35. I would be happy. It's gonna cost a bit to ship, so if I could get maybe $30, including shipping, uh, 25 to 30 bucks, I would be pretty happy with that. It's a nice, attractive piece. If you've got that color scheme in your home, um, it would be a really attractive piece, and it's signed. Uh, it's got the name, and it specifies 1972, so you also got exactly the era. Uh, another piece of pottery I picked up had a little bit less luck doing any sort of specific research, but it was only a dollar, and I picked it up because it was signed. This was definitely a, a studio piece, maybe a class piece. It was signed with the author's or artist, artist's name. I believe it's Hensel, H-E-N-S-E-L. It looks like that last letter. But more importantly, it's, di it's dated 1968. And this piece would be something that could be thrown today. So I just really liked this. So you can tell I've got stoneware that, you know, this could just sit right here and no one would notice. Uh, but I will be selling it. This is a little bit more brown where those are blue, but regardless, I just thought it was an attractive piece for a buck. You know, I, I've had a couple of anonymous art pottery pieces that have sold on uh, Etsy for me already. And I was each time I was pleasantly surprised because I get I personally like pottery. I like the size of this. This is a really nice piece to be able to display. Even though I couldn't find anything on the artist, it doesn't really matter. The fact that it's got the date of 1968 just automatically makes this an attractive, you know, over 50 year old piece. 
another piece of pottery that I picked up was a little bit of a mystery um, because initially I picked these up. It's a salt and pepper shaker, black pottery. The script of the S I thought was really attractive. I thought the shape was really attractive. It's got the old cork in there. I picked these up for a dollar and what I discovered, and I saw this when I was buying them, but I didn't want to make a big, a big deal about them, but I could tell that there was a signature on there and I'm not sure you'll be able to see it. I have been unsuccessful in being able to read all of the signature, but I have figured out the middle word and it's Oaxaca, O-A-X-A-C-A, -A which is a type of black uh, pot Mexican pottery. There is a name at the beginning that looks kind of like Fowl, F-A-U-E-L-L, -L, or maybe Powell, P-A-U-E-L-L, -L, uh, assuming those are L's that I thought maybe at one point it was an A. Tried many combinations. I don't know if that's the artist. I don't know if that is uh, maybe a city. I could not find any reference to it. And then there's another word at the very end which I just really couldn't figure out. Um, I think it says Mexico, but there's something at the beginning of it which wouldn't doesn't make sense for it to say Mexico. So again, I, I don't exactly know what they are, but it's got the piece, uh, the S uh, with a really nifty script on it. The P also has kind of a neat script. The fact they still have the, the, the cork inserts, I do think there's some age to these. Um, there's not a lot of activity with Oaxaca, Oh, and I'm sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly. There were only two sales of any Oaxaca black pottery in 2019, according to Worth Point. Both of them were smaller, diminutive sized uh, uh, figurines that would be most comparable to this that sold for 20 bucks each. But no salt and pepper shakers. Uh, none sold at all, and none are listed on Etsy. There are many more pieces listed on Etsy, a lot of pieces listed on Etsy, which makes me a little bit concerned that there's so many listed on Etsy, but not so many sold in, according to Worth Point, that the market may just not be there. So I'll probably just try and sell these as the salt and pepper shaker, get some attention with that, and then it's got the little added bonus of being that special uh, black pottery, which might attract some people's attention. Another piece that I picked up is this little Scotty Dog uh, single bookend. Paid $5 for it. It's one of the most expensive things that I picked up in this entire haul that I'm covering. It has an odd glaze to it, which right now, according to what you can kind of tell right now, when it's really close, it looks very blue, but it's, it's kind of a aqua greenish blue color. I've never seen a dog this color of any breed, so it's a kind of an odd, very specific color that if you've got that decor, you, you're set. You've got, a, you've got a bookend. These, there are all kinds. Scotties are very popular to collect. People like any type of specific breed love to collect their breed. Scotties are a popular breed. There are a number of these bookends, or a number of Scotties bookends uh, currently listed on Etsy. Right now, three of them are listed as singles because this one is a single. Uh, they range from $12 to $39. None of them are exactly like this, but they're, they're comparable. This is marked uh, made in Japan. Uh, so it's, you know, so it is a generic uh, Japanese made piece. So it's got a little bit of age to it. It's super cute. It's not going to sell for a lot of money. Uh, there were 10 Scotty bookends sold in 2019 ranging from 50 to 30 bucks and the $30 were pairs. So at best, I'm probably gonna get 10 to 15 bucks for this plus shipping, but I'm totally fine with that. I'm not gonna make as much money, but I did, uh, if you remember, if you were watching some of my videos earlier, and in December, I ran a fundraiser specifically for uh, JOMDR, Just, Just One More Dachshund Rescue, JOMDR.org. And who actually, just as a side point, is going to have one of their dogs will be in the uh, dog bowl uh, in February. But anyway, the uh, fundraiser was very popular and I sold a lot of my dog items. So when I saw this, I really just needed to replenish some of my stock. And it's more than I ideally would have liked to have paid, but I, five bucks, I thought it was worth it. And uh, maybe I can double or triple my money and just have another dog item for those people who are interested in such a thing. Oh, just found my note on the hull vase. Uh, so six of them sold 
the woodland vase I was talking about. Six of them sold in uh, an Etsy, uh, ranging from 13 to 30 bucks, but the most recent one was 30. So they, they were going up in price. Five were listed between $30 and 50 dollars but 50 included shipping so i think i should be able to recoup my buck that's i've got in there okay i uh, mentioned the left in plate on pedestal i personally uh focus or really like getting left in particularly if i can find them with labels with the original japan labels on them uh real again uh jeffrey from real nifty vintage has no idea who i am but I was obsessed with his videos when I first started. I really liked his approach. I really liked a lot of what he had to share. He was very educational without being condescending. He was not afraid to make mistakes. I just liked watching him. I've watched many others, but I've always liked watching Jeffrey. And he talked a lot about Lefton and just that there is a market, there's a book you know, dedicated to Lefton collecting, which always helps because people like to be able to reference things. So when, it's, when I find left in, I definitely like to pick it up. But this was a piece of left in that I really, I was a little surprised to see it was left in. It, they're canisters. So I found two of them. Now I went against my initial rule of thumb. This one, this smaller one, you can see has a hairline crack going through it. And it's not even hairline because it does actually, in part of it, does appear on the other side and along the edges. So this initially was the one I found first. It was listed for as a Goodwill. Uh, green was half price, so it was $2, but it was on half price, so it was, it was a buck. But even for a buck, I'm like, oh, nope, it's damaged. I'm not picking it up because I'm not going to be able to sell it. But then as I'm looking through the rest, I'm primarily looking for pieces to add to my personal tea canister collection, I found the larger one. And so suddenly I had a situation where I had two of the set and this one was a buck 50 that I figured, you know what? The damage is not obvious to the smaller one. I'll pair them together and maybe between the two, I, I won't be able to get a lot for the damaged one, but it might bring uh, more attention to this one. It is called the Della Robia pattern. Uh, this is another case where the Label is the 1953 to 1971 label. It's the registered. Is it gonna wants to focus on the uh, Goodwill sticker? It's the um, registered U.S. Patent Office exclusives Japan. So it's 1953 to 1971. So again, these are a little bit older. Quite a bit of activity um, on these, and somewhat entertaining because no one knows what they are. They're not marked in any way and what I found odd is there's four sizes to me the largest side would always be the cookie jar and maybe that's because I want to fill it with as many cookies as I can find but a lot of people the general consensus seemed to be the, the cookie jar was the second to largest and the largest was for flour maybe that's true I don't know but they're not marked so they can be anything so I had to go kind of based on height um, the taller of the two is I've been selling there were two sales in 2019 uh, and that's the one that's in the better condition those two there have been two sales each of them are $22.50 so that one seems to be fairly consistent seller over 20 bucks the smaller one um, had less activity uh, but the one sale it did have was 25 bucks so the fact that it's damaged I'm not gonna be able to get as much but between the two of them there were a couple full sets like a full set of, of four sold for 60 so I'm not even I maybe I can get 30 because I've got two out of the four but because of the damage if I could get around 25 plus shipping or even 20 plus shipping I have 250 in this so it's definitely something that I at 20 bucks and plus shipping I think I'd be able to sell them um, there are currently two listings on or no I'm sorry there's only one listing on Etsy right now and it is for this um, it is for the second largest size. Uh, the, I've got the third and the fourth uh, for the second largest size listed for $42 plus shipping. So again, if I could you know, get these out there around $20, $25, maybe $30 plus ship and with some shipping in there, make me a happy camper. Okay, uh, loving my porcelain, my love of little plates, coasters, butter pats, things like that. I've got this set of Royal Worcester. This is 50 cents. Uh, Royal Worcester uh, made in England actually that one says made in England 
these two have a slightly different back stamp. They're in the same family. They're called uh, Alpine Flowers. This one is a slightly different one. It just says England. It doesn't say made in England. Um, I've, so I've got this set of three. Not much money into them. They don't sell for a lot. Uh, in some cases, the ones that are so, have sold and the ones that sell for decent money have their original boxes, which I do not have. So these are probably going to sell somewhere in the neighborhood of $3 a piece. I, again, I don't have that much money into them. So if I can get somewhere around 10 bucks plus shipping, uh, maybe this will still be under a pound, I think so. So maybe I could do $15 shipping included. I think people would be willing to pay five bucks for this. They're, they're attractive little coasters. Uh, I personally like them. Um, there were six sales in 2019, so they were being sold. It was just a, a range or a matter of what the price will be. Staying on that same uh, realm at another 50 cent uh, coaster, this is the old Curiosity Shop. Instantaneously, I have never met Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, probably never will meet Scott from the old Curiosity Shop if I ever do. I'll probably add this to the 25,000 coasters of this that he probably already has uh, if I haven't sold it by then. So I am gonna try and list this it is stamped on the back from Rosina, and it says purchased at the old Curiosity Shop. So what I'm doing a little bit of research, it looks like Rosina manufactures collectible items specifically sold, at least in this case, at, at Dickens' old Curiosity Shop. This, though, is not something that was, has been listed. So this appears to be relatively scarce or not particularly popular, let's put it that way. But of the things that have sold, there was only one sale in all of 29 for anything from the Rosina Curiosity Shop pattern. It was a cup and saucer and it sold for 12 bucks. So again, same thing with the Royal Worcester. This is not gonna bring a lot of money. I, if, if Scott showed any interest in it, I'd put it in a padded envelope and send it, send it his way if he, if he likes it. Um, because I got 50 cents in it. I just thought it was fun and I, again, I specifically thought of Scott picked it up and you know, I'll try and sell it. Uh, these happen to come from Goodwill. This is still some more porcelain. Uh, this is a set, this is, I should have included it when I talked about Nippon. Uh, these are footed, I'm gonna say nut cups. As I understand it, and I could be wrong, so if anyone knows specifically, uh, I would love to learn more because I love these little smalls and I want to be better educated. But my understanding that if they have a pattern or design actually painted within the um, bowl, you know, it is a bowl, if there's a pattern painted within there, then it's, then it's a nut cup. That because you would be scraping salt out with a spoon, I'm not sure if the salt would do anything to the paint, but you would possibly be scraping the paint. Uh, maybe the nuts are a little bit less caustic to it and they're larger so you could pick them up. I honestly don't know. The reason I picked them up though was because it was a set of six and they were a dollar, no, yes, no. Yes, a dollar a piece. So I probably paid more than I should have, but I love, I love these things. I have a personal collection of uh, salt sellers. These will not go into my personal collection. I'm gonna try and sell them because it's the set. There's not a lot of activity uh, selling just these. There is, again, the general concept that they can be nut cups and there's a lot of sets of six of nut cup, but then they have the, the master cup along with it and I do not have that. So these would be selling individually uh, or as a set, but they, they without their master bowl. I'm hoping I can turn these around for around 15 to 20 bucks. Maybe it's only gonna double my money, but this is again falls in that fun, something fun that I want to try and resell. And I don't come across, particularly at a Goodwill, I don't come across full sets of early 20th century porcelain that's in perfect condition. Um, there were, I think it initially had been a set of eight and I left two of them behind because the foot, the foot on two of them were, were chipped up. So anyway, inexpensive find, excited to have it and uh, hope I can do something with it. Uh, another find, similar, a uh, little piece of lusterware uh, with the floral ba flower basket, but this is Bavaria. 
and this is a new phone for me and so I'm hoping I can figure out so I, I saw out the last video some of the close-ups weren't zooming focusing as much as I'd like so I have to do some research on that so I apologize if these are not as clear as they could be uh, Z S and company so I've got to do, I've, I haven't found much on this, but I don't think there's much need to do a lot of research on this. I paid $2 for it. I think I can turn this around for 10 to 15 bucks plus shipping just based on some of the other pieces of luster that are out there. It's an attractive size. It's an attractive piece, a simple design. Uh, I think that will, um, I think that, that hopefully that will go well. I also found another piece of, uh, older porcelain not stamped but it's a little side dish that says bones and so it's the concept that if you had a dinner plate which i don't have with me but this would sit alongside the dinner plate very nice and um, correct and if you have waste or if you're eating a chicken which disturbs me greatly that there is a chicken on this and then it says bones so if you're eating him Please put his body parts back into his bowl. I just thought this was cute. It was 99 cents. It's not marked in any way. There's actually quite a bit of crazing in it, which is troubling. Um, but I don't think anyone's going to use this, you know, for its intended purpose. If somebody just likes chickens, it's got the green coloration. Who knows why anyone would buy this? I don't know why I did. But it was different. I had to pick it up, give it a good home. So I sh hopefully I can turn that around for, you know, maybe 10 bucks plus shipping and to see what happens. Another pair, this goes back into the pottery side, a pair of tiles. Uh, I'm getting kind of a false graph vibe on these, but they're corked, so I don't know the age. To me, this is like kind of 80s, 90s. Um, I got married in 1993, and I could totally have seen these going into our kitchen. Um, I can't find anything specifically on these, but I only paid 50 cents a piece. They're, I, I'm sure that they're vintage in, in by that definition. Maybe I can turn these around for again, maybe about 10 bucks plus shipping. The two of them are gonna probably be over a pound, so I'm gonna have to be careful with that. But uh, it's an attractive piece. If this color, if this matches a color scheme, they're just, with the cork back, they're really designed to be more of a trivet than a wall hanging, although there is a hole on the back to hang it. Um, but I think they're really more designed as a trivet. A buck turn it around. Hopefully, you know, 10 bucks would be great. And then the last piece I've got is back a piece of Fort Porcelain. Now this is again, I, this competes for one of the most expensive things I bought. This is $4.99. It was a porcelain manufacturer that I was not familiar with. FF, which stood for Figio, and I'm sorry, do not speak Norwegian, so I'm probably slaughtering it. Figio Flint. F as in Frank, I, G, G, J, O, then the word Flint, F-L-I-N-T, and then it specifically says Norway right on there. Just an attractive uh, plate. It reminded me of the plate that I picked up that was from Swiss Air, had that kind of the same shape. This kind of, you know, simple, almost primitive drawing, woman churning butter. I think that's S-M-O-R. I did not look to see what that means, but so I'm assuming it's Norwegian. There are all kinds of examples of square plates selling for this Figio Flint. Uh, there were 100 items sold in 2019, I'm sorry, 100 items sold the fourth quarter of 2019 alone. So this company, although I had never heard of it, makes and sells a lot, there, but none of them had anything to do, it did not have this design. There were about tw um, a handful of square plates that had the same size and shape, but just had a different design. Some of them had the same style of drawing, so it's all in the same family, but just none that had this, this word uh, within it. They were all selling fairly consistently somewhere in the $20 mark. There are currently five square plates listed on Etsy. Again, none of this design itself, and they are all listed for between 12 and 37. So I do have $5 into this, so my hope would be to be able to turn this around for around 15 plus shipping, maybe 20 plus shipping. The fact that there aren't a lot of these out there, I, I don't know if that's going to help me or hurt me, but it'll be the first piece of Norwegian. Uh, no, that's take that, I take that back. I've got some Porsgrund uh, porcelain, but it'll definitely be the first piece of Figio Flint 
that I'll add to the site and uh, I'll see if how it goes and if I want to go out and search for more. So that was everything in my pottery and porcelain haul. This ran a little bit longer than I'd anticipated. I'm trying to, I was trying to keep them under 30, failed by about five minutes, so I apologize. But if you stood with me this long, I really appreciate it. Again, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. You can find us on Etsy, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, you've already found me on YouTube. So if you've gotten this far, I would appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, comment on it, share it with your friends, and really help me make this uh, channel successful. And if you've watched any of my earlier videos and can compare it to this one, would really appreciate your feedback to let me know uh, what style you like. And once I get caught up posting everything into Etsy, I'll have some more flexibility of what style of video I want to start focusing on going forward into 2020. Thanks again for your time. Uh, this is Patrick, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.